one museum in Upper Manhattan that's causing quite the cloister. It combines art history, horticulture, and gorgeous views of the Hudson. We're checking it out today. Let's head inside. The Metropolitan Museum of Art is as essential to the city as yellow cabs and hot dogs. And just like it shouldn't be missed, neither should its gorgeous cousin, the Met Cloisters. The museum is home to an amazing collection of artistic works, architecture, and gardens from medieval Europe, and is split between Romanesque and Gothic styles. So the building was opened in 1938 as it stands now and it was really created with the idea that people who might not ever have an opportunity to go to Europe would get that sense of what it feels like to be in a medieval building. I think one of the reasons that it works is there's a tremendous sense of authenticity that people find when they come here. They can get kind of up out of the city. For many New Yorkers this is an oasis in a busy place. The gardens and the collections of art are closely related and I think that dual experience of being in galleries and then walking out into these green spaces is one of the things that makes this spot so special in New York. And the gardens especially are places that people can sit and contemplate and hopefully leave feeling refreshed. If you're looking to escape to Europe without leaving the island of Manhattan, then this is the place for you. Visitors can expect to see approximately 2,000 works on display with everything from metalwork and enamels to tapestries and stained glass. So this is the Marode altarpiece. It's probably one of the great Netherlandish paintings in America. So the central scene that you're looking at features the Annunciation when the Archangel Gabriel comes in and announces to Mary that she's going to have a child. So Mary is sitting there in red and she's reading and Gabriel's in the room but she doesn't see him yet. But his breeze of his arrival has snuffed out the candle that's on the table in front of them. Whoa, okay, oh yep, I see it, I would point, but that beautiful alarm may go off. Gorgeous, now what kind of pieces in addition to paintings do you have here at the Cloisters? People can find all sorts of things that were made in the Middle Ages, especially things like stained glass, goldsmith work, sculpture. In fact, one of the things that's really exciting about being at the Cloisters is you really get a sense of a full range of medieval artistic production from around the year 800 all the way up to about 1500. Do the items in these rooms tell a story? Yeah, actually this room tells a really important story about this painting because many of the objects that people can see in the painting are featured in this gallery as real things and that gives our visitors the sense that this picture was really representing in a very accurate way the domestic space of a 15th century European interior. Next, Griffith shows me that love can be found in some of the most mysterious places. We check out one of his favorite pieces at the Met Cloisters. Sometimes some of the smallest pieces have the greatest impact. Is that the case here, Griff? It is for me. This is actually one of my favorite works of art in the collection. And it features a scene of an assault on a castle. But when you look more carefully, one of the defenders in the castle actually has wings and a bow and arrow. So that figure is Cupid. Oh. And he's shooting his arrows at all the knights who are trying to climb into the castle. And the defenders of the castle are all women. So these are knights trying to get into their ladies' castles. Now you said this is one of your personal favorites. Why? I think one of the reasons it's a favorite is because people tend to think of the Middle Ages as a period that's dominated by religious sensibilities. And here you get a sense of some of the other kinds of concerns and entertainments that people enjoyed during the period. While the cloisters are beautiful at any time of year, they're especially breathtaking during the summer. Griffith shows me how the gardens fully enrich the museum experience. So this garden is actually planted with beds that are done according to theme. Like this one's devoted to magic and ceremony in the Middle Ages. All the plants that we grow here are the kinds of plants that would have been grown during the medieval period in Europe. And these great trees that anchor this space are quince trees. Each of them is about 70 years old. So it's all about weaving together the, the art and the history and also the horticulture as well. Yeah, well I think one of the things that is fun to see is when kids come into this space, a lot of the plants that they see are plants that are referenced in things like Harry Potter. So in those classes that are being taught in Hogwarts, many of the plants that they're using are plants that we grow here. <laughs> well, I have to say thank you so much, Griff, for giving me a tour of the cloisters and showing me the history and also the horticulture that's here. It's such a nice experience. Yeah, you're so welcome. It's a delight to have you here. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clemens.